So this is part three of the off-road comparison and in it the four vehicles are going to be attempting a muddy rutted climb. They'll each do it slightly differently and we'll take a couple of different viewpoints so you can see the differences between the four vehicles. So this test is on a slippery rutted incline. 300 series is up first and you can see that rock which is going to play an important part in proceedings later on. So coming up through the rut now and at this point there's a bit of a ledge and the 300 series is spinning all four wheels which is a problem because it's really then a test of tyres as opposed to the test of a vehicle. But the driver does have a trick up his sleeve and he's going to use that to get over. It's first of all moving the steering wheel left and right, that's not going to work. It's a good technique and now we're going to see it from the side. So that's the point at which the particular the wheelbase on this particular car and that ledge and the steepness and the slipperiness all came together and it just can't go any further. If you go back a bit and just go for a little bit more power, it doesn't quite work that time. Move steering wheel left and right, it doesn't quite work either. And now this is what the driver actually does, goes back a bit to an area of good traction and then takes just a fraction of a run up and gets up and over and then the wheel goes around that rock. So let's look at that from the side. We go back to the point where we've got good traction, all four wheels more or less on the ground and just a little bit of momentum and we're just up and over, perfectly judged. So now the car comes up all the way through the rest of the climb. You can see it just slides there, should have been in the rut already. And even at that yeah, point with the going. suspension flex going uphill a bit, shouldn't have come to a stop, but anyway the driver is able just to apply the accelerator and drive out. Now we've got the Nissan Y62 Patrol nicely into the rut, so they're good slow speed as well, learned from the previous video. Wheel goes right over that rock but slides to one side and then the car can make its way up without too much of a problem. Now the driver's going outside of the rut a little bit there, should be further over to the right, so we right fix hand that hand for hand him hand and get him to come over to the right, a bit of right, right so right hand down into that rut there and you can see the combination of the long wheelbase, good brake traction control okay, is working pretty well for that, that vehicle. Right. Even coming to a stop there, able just to apply the throttle and crawl out without too much drama. Now here you can see that the wheelbase is definitely longer than the 300 series. Sometimes a short wheelbase is good off-road, sometimes a longer wheelbase is good, it really depends on the situation. You can also see the hydraulic body motion control working really well when one, the front wheel goes up, the rear wheel comes down and for an independent suspension vehicle that, that's working very well um, indeed. So here's the Patrol versus the 300 series wheelbase. In this case, for this situation and this obstacle, the longer wheelbase of the Y62 means it has to flex its suspension a little bit less and therefore it's got an advantage. It's also got slightly taller diameter di tyres than the 300 series and that will help it climb over obstacles as well. Now we come to the Defender and let's take a look and see what happens with that rock which is being moved here and there and you can see it's now absolutely squarely in front of the Defender's wheels and the Defender is now spinning all four wheels and therefore it's going nowhere and the reason is that rock in the front left hand wheel that is what is actually stopping its progress because the rock's now just in exactly the wrong place. So that's going to be a bit of an unfair test, I don't really want it in the way so I pop down and remove it and then we can get on with the test. So with the rock okay, removed the now. Defender can continue, so it just crawls forward and you see no more speed than before, just comes up over that little ledge without any problem at all. Now you're wondering why did the 300 series struggle so much in the first place? Well that was the first car okay, through so it so was wet, um, every car that goes through makes it a bit drier. You can see there the Defender is struggling a bit just due to lack of articulation but that excellent brake traction control pulls it through. The other interesting point is that as the time goes on then the track gets drier and drier so that's helping as well. And you can see all four wheels are turning then, the vehicle is just out of traction because it's a little bit dampened, a little bit uphill and a bit clay. And as soon as you get water on that surface it becomes a problem. 
Now here is the defender and the defender um, and you can see just the difference there between the two. It's pretty much the same sort of speed but that rock just made a difference between being able to make progress and not. Now coming up over this section, the suspension doesn't flex as much as any of the others but that really good brake traction control, remember the rear e-diff as well helps bring the vehicle through, wheel lift but that doesn't stop the defender, even with three wheels on the ground it just keeps crawling up. Now we've got the Grenadier nicely into the ruts here, coming up to the ledge which stopped all the rest, how's it going to go? And you can see that, yep, um, it's got good suspension flex, but it just doesn't want to work that brake traction control effectively. Now coming up the rest of it, suspension flexing very nicely indeed. Look at that, that's great. And you just look at the flexibility in that suspension. But again, as soon as one wheel starts to have less load on it and therefore less grip, then there's um, excessive wheel spin, which is not checked by the brake traction control. And we can see it here as well, look at the vehicle come up and then just comes to this point and then that, that's it, that's kind of a stop. And the back right wheel isn't really working until the driver increases the revs and uh, that's just taking a little bit too much effort. Now up over here, again look at the beautiful way that suspension is working, keeping all wheels on the ground. That right rear is unloaded a bit but even so manages to have enough traction to keep going. So here comes the Y62 patrol again, nicely into the ruts, and again this is a nice slow run. No problems getting over that ledge this time, thanks to that uh, good HBMC. And that flex is working really well for it comes up to this point over here and then I think it gets caught out on its wheelbase because all four wheels spin but that brake traction control doesn't need much revs to keep the vehicle moving and on its way so we can have a look at that again from the side and look at the front wheel move relative to the rear wheel that, that's good suspension engineering right there And even there, just a brief wheel spin before it's arrested and the car keeps going. And here, that particular line, particularly wheelbase, I think it just gets caught out and even then is able just to keep moving. So here's the Defender again, this time with no rock to get in the way and not even pausing at that little ledge. You wouldn't even know it was there. So up in the ruts now, nice and slow. And let's see how it gets on with the next section. So that's actually pretty much out of flex there, but you see just barely a wheel spin, just a little bit there, and it keeps going a wheel in the air, but three wheels don't stop the defender of its sophisticated electronics, and it just crawls up. And from the side here, we can see that those wheels barely spin at all before that brake traction control comes in, and of course it's got the E-diff equivalent, or pretty much equivalent to a rear cross axle locker, on the back wheel and over here this is where the car stent that right wheel drops down and it does as you can see but again barely a wheel spin contrast that to the grenadier there again front right wheel comes off but the car just keeps powering up now we've got the 300 series which probably going to be king of this hill because it combines really great suspension flex along with really good brake traction control so you can see it's not really having any significant problem here, driver just modulating the throttle trying to keep um, everything moving, no hint of a wheel lift in the air and those wheels are just barely spinning, a pretty impressive performance and over here you can see that the wheels are spinning just slightly but the car never actually stops moving and just look at the way that back right wheel goes up and down and just here it goes right down still in contact with the ground just a bit of a spin and keeps going, it's great suspension design there. Now we've got the Grenadier and nicely into the ruts. So where the others just cruised through, what happens there? We need a few more revs to wake things up and keep moving. So suspension is good. Brake traction control not quite so good.
and again as soon as one wheel starts to get unloaded you can see it starts to spin so suspension is doing its best until everyone's taking the same line as that back right wheel always gets uh, knocked by the rock so here we can see we come to a halt and we just need more we'll spend look at that back right wheel again not really working for us and we we move up a bit further you can see the, the front and right wheels moving up and down relative to each other very nicely indeed and here it's more the good suspension yeah it's just more revs than the others just to get up over, over that section but you can see the suspension working well keeping all four wheels pretty much in contact with the ground so now let's take a look at all four vehicles at the same time doing the first little ledge part And we'll take a look at the other section where suspension was tested. So let's look at what we learned. First of all, that water can make things very, very slippery indeed. Even a small rock can stop progress if you're on the limit of traction. And tracks can also evolve quickly. You saw on the later runs, vehicles had less slipping, and that was because the previous vehicles had gone up, and also as the day went on, water just started to evaporate and make the tracks grippier. Now, you also saw the 300 series driver do a bit of wheel waving and just go back a little bit and just a fraction more momentum, and that solved his first run. The key here, again, it's suspension flex and good brake traction control, and the 300 series, I think, did it best. The wheelbase makes a difference, sometimes the long wheelbase works for you, sometimes not. And throttle control is something you didn't really see here, but that's actually very important because that allows you to precisely meter out the correct amount of torque to keep the vehicle moving over terrain like this. So I hope you found this video useful. Any questions, please drop them in the comments and stand by for part four.